All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another action-packed, fun-filled night of physics. Tonight, we're going to talk about mass defect and binding energy. And to do that, I've got a little stopwatch here because I want to make sure I don't go over. So I'm going to hit that. And hopefully, there we go. All right, we're in business. OK, a um, couple of terms to start us out tonight. You need to know about electron volts. And electron volts are just a unit of energy uh, a very small unit of energy. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. That's an incredibly small number, but something that we'll use when we talk about um, energy with a single nuclei. All right, another one that's common is the mega electron volts, which is just a, a million electron volts. So what we've done is we move the, the decimal over six places to the right. So a mega electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13 joules. Okay. Further down, um, tonight we're talking about mass as well as energy. And so <coughs> I want to define a unified mass unit. It's a very, very small mass unit. It's about the size of a, a neutron or a proton. Okay. A unified mass unit is, is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And a proton, as you can see down here, is slightly bigger than 1u. And a neutron is also slightly more massive than one U. All right, so let's get this party started. Tonight's show is about the big man himself. It's about Einstein and E equals MC squared. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to look at mass, we're going to look at energy, and we're going to see that they're really two versions of the same thing, kind of like um, dollars and ringgit are both currency. They're both money. Energy and mass are, are two two units, two ways to, to measure the same thing, and uh, really a more correct way to think of it is, is mass energy, okay, because they're just two units that can be converted back and forth, all right, and in doing that, we're going to introduce what is called the mass defect, okay, and what mass defect is, I'm going to make that a little smaller, hopefully, so you can see it, there we go, mass defect is the difference between the mass of a nucleus or a nuclide, okay, and the mass of its individual nucleons. So we have a picture here of, of a helium nucleus. A helium nucleus has two protons and two neutrons. Okay, it's it's an alpha particle. And to the left of it we have two protons and, and two neutrons. And and in this case they're separate. And what mass defect will show you is that if you add up the individual masses of one, two protons and two neutrons, you're going to get 4.03 U. And if you take the mass of a helium nucleus or an alpha particle, you're going to get 4.00 U. Okay, so there's a difference of 0.03 U that the nucleus, the mass of the nucleus, is smaller than the mass of its individual parts. Okay, that's kind of like um, take the mass of the Earth your torso, your two arms, and your legs individually, and then add them together to make you, and suddenly the mass has gone down. Okay, that's called mass defect. All right, and, and what the question obviously you want to ask is, is why is there a difference in mass? Why would you have two protons and two neutrons by themselves be more massive than two protons and two neutrons in a nucleus? Where does, where does that, that extra mass go? And the answer to that is is what's called binding energy. Okay, today in class what we did is we talked about we talked about strong nuclear force and and and, and we said the strong nuclear force is the force between adjacent nucleons that, that hold it together. And so to to break that force, you need energy. Okay, and and the energy that is required to to take a nucleus and break it apart and sp split it into its into its component nucleons, that's called a binding energy. Okay, so that, once again, binding energy is the amount of energy it takes to take a nucleus and break it apart into individual neutrons and protons. Okay? And that concept is based on, is the, the, probably the most famous equation in the world, is, is based on E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. That's that's what that equation means. So event, uh, what they're really telling you is they're saying that energy and mass are equal to each other with a conversion factor of c squared. All right. 
okay? Um, it's kind of like uh, uh, dollars and ringgits are, are equal to each other with a conversion factor of three. If you take one dollar, you times it by three, you get your, your currency in ringgit. Well, if you take your mass and you multiply it by the speed of light squared, you're going to get your energy, okay? So based on the E equals mc squared, the energy that's required to break that strong nuclear force into, and, and take that nucleus and separate it into its individual nucleons, that energy is converted into mass of the nucleons. It, it, it makes those nucleons more massive, okay? And I think, yes, I have a prom analogy. Prom is coming up, and here we have two nucleons that are attracted to each other through a strong nuclear force, not unlike prom dates attracted to each other through other forces that we're not going to talk about in physics. Okay, now, I'm a teacher and I'm a chaperone, and I want to break that attraction. Sorry, guys, i got to do it. So what I have to do is I come in and I add energy to break that force, and I take this blue nucleon and I pull it to the right. Here we go. And I take the red nucleon and I pull it to the left, and that requires energy, okay? Where does the energy go? I now have separated that nucleus into its component parts. Where's the energy gone? Well, what's happened is E equals mc squared. I put energy into that nucleus to break it apart, and that energy has turned into mass. And so what happens is my component nucleons, which are now separate, have a bigger mass. E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times c squared. So what I did is I put energy into my nucleus to break that attraction, and that energy was converted into mass. And so now, if I go back a few slides, there we go, All right? Here's my nucleus, remember? And it's got its component parts. And if I break those apart, into individual pieces, the individual pieces have a bigger mass. Okay? All right. So, a little, a little conversion factor. We're not going to do any problems tonight because we got to watch the time. Um, but I do want you to know for when we do the problems that a mass defect, which is measured in U, can be converted into binding energy through the equation 1U equals 931.5 mega electron volts. So if you have a mass defect of a U, and you put 931.5 mega electron volts into that nucleus, and that would be a huge nucleus. And and what it'll it'll do is it'll split that apart, and then your your component parts will increase in mass by one U. We'll come back to the calculations in class, so I, I'm not going to look at those tonight. But this is the conversion factor between mass and energy when it comes to a nucleus. All right. So to wrap this up, we, we talked about binding energy, and we said that binding energy is the energy uh, required to take a nucleus and break it into its component parts. Now, obviously, the more nucleons I have, the more energy is required to break it apart. Okay, like uranium has 238 nucleons, and they're, they're all held together with strong nuclear forces. So that's going to take a lot of energy to break that apart. But uranium's not that stable, as we saw in class. It's actually a radioactive element. And the reason it's not stable is, as we talked about today, the electrostatic forces pulling, uh, uh, repelling the protons and, and wanting the nucleus to break up. So... I want to introduce a new concept. This is the um, binding energy per nucleon. Okay, so binding energy is what we were talking about before. That's the amount of energy to break a nucleus into its component parts. Binding energy per nucleon is an indication of how stable the nucleus is. Okay, the greater the binding energy per nucleon, the more energy per nucleon required to break the nucleus into its component parts. Okay, and I mean, obviously, if it requires more energy, it means it's more stable, all right? Helium and iron are two of the most stable nuclides, all right? And so what happens is nuclides undergo fission and fusion or decay to increase their stability, to, to have a greater binding energy per nucleon, all right? Let's use to 
draw a comparison. Let's talk about uh, about money in a family. Okay, and you can have a family that brings in a hundred thousand dollars, but they have twenty kids, and so things would be you know maybe a little tight for that family because because even though there's a lot of money coming in, that money is spread among a whole lot of people, and so each person doesn't get very much money. That's like uranium. Uranium has a large binding energy, but it's shared over a number of nucleons, and so the binding energy per nucleon is actually very small, and therefore it, um, it's not a very stable nucleus. Okay? If you have a family that makes less than $100,000, let's say you have a family that makes $80,000, but they only have one kid, they don't have 20 kids, well, there's a lot more money per um, person in that family, and therefore that you could say that family financially at least is, is more stable. Okay, so binding energy per nucleon is an indication of how stable the nucleus is. And this is a diagram, I, again, we'll talk about it in class um, and show you, but I just wanted to give you the general shape of it. Along here you have the number of nucleons, and this is the binding energy per nucleon. And you can see iron 56 is the most stable nucleus in the universe. Okay, helium is also pretty high. Here's helium right here, and then hydrogen doesn't have any binding energy. It's way down here because it's, it's only a proton. And so what happens is large elements undergo fission to be get more stable, to get a higher binding energy per nucleon. And smaller elements at times can undergo fusion. They do this in the stars. Like, okay, stars are giant fusion reactors, and so these small nuclei stick together, and they become bigger and therefore more stable as they move up. But I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at that in class. And um, So anyhow, what have I got? 11.41, so I, um, I'm under the 15-minute YouTube limit. Hope everybody has a great night tonight. Um, it's tough stuff, and I went through it really quick, so make sure you ask questions. It's nuclear physics. I mean, nuclear physics is, is tough stuff. So, I mean, you guys are, you guys are a smart class, and... and uh, I know you can do it. So keep working hard, keep asking questions, and, and we'll get through this. We're almost there, guys. Have a good night. Cheers.